T-Wolves throttle the Raptors 133-85. I got our expert, Tyler Metcalf. He's going to help us break it all down. It's all coming up next on the Locked On Wolves Postcast. You are Locked On Wolves Postcast, part of Locked On Minnesota on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up? What's up? Back in the lab. Back at it. Another T-Wolves postcast episode right here on the Lockdown Sports Minnesota Network. You got myself, Luke Inman, at Luke underscore Spinman. That's the man right there, Tyler Metcalf. He's on X at Team Metcalf 11. And Tyler, before we jump into all the action, quick reminder, tonight's episode brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book and official sports book partner of the NBA. All right, man. Wolves' second night of a back-to-back. Big win last night for his Houston OKC loss. The West just keeps getting tighter and tighter. We're getting down to crunch time. Six games to play now after tonight. And tonight was your last home game, too, before you head on the road for that West Coast trip. Coming up, Phoenix Friday, Lakers Sunday. More on that a little bit later. But just another huge opportunity. Take care of business. Rack up every single win you can. That's exactly what they did. Even without a guy like Mike Conley, he took a breather tonight. They took the Raptors, man, to the tool shed. They were in straight business mode for all four quarters. 16-point lead heading into halftime. They don't let their foot off the gas in the second half. They outscored them in quarter three and four by nearly 35 points. 133-85, that's your final. Wolves win it. Meanwhile, OKC loses again, second night in a row, this time to Boston. Boston, by the way, locked up that one seed. I thought maybe they would rest uh, some guys anyways, give OKC an easy dub. That was not the case. More on that a little bit later. But Wolves get a little bit more breathing room, distance themselves, just a pinch more as they try to keep up with Denver now for that one seed. But kick us off here, Tyler. Biggest takeaways. And what's a win like this mean for their number one seed chances? Yeah, and this is just one that they had to take care of. Um, Coming into tonight, it was kind of questioning whether or not Anthony Edwards would even play or Rudy Gobert. And this was kind of the vintage game where you rest guys. We saw that with Mike Conley, Um, but Ant's been struggling recently. I think they said he's missed like 22 ish, give or take one or two uh, threes in a row coming into tonight. Um, So was this a night where, you you know, you just give him the night off, give him a couple days and we go into the next game raring to go because this Raptors team, no matter who the Timberwolves really threw out there tonight, this is a team that the Timberwolves should have slaughtered and they did. And it was really nice to see them finally just get this one over with basically by halftime, um, which they haven't been doing a ton of recently. They've, you know, this season they've been winning these games, but they typically wait until the fourth quarter to pull away. It's really good to see them just kill them early and let, the really deep bench guys get in and get a lot of run. Yeah, you know, it's been an absolute roller coaster the past week if you're a Wolves fan. I mean, you lose to Chicago, coming off the Denver win, so high and low there. All the Glenn Taylor stuff going on, et cetera, et cetera. How about if you're Nas Reed, though? How about that roller coaster? Because six days ago, the guy was like plus 850 to win the sixth man of the year. Now it's about a coin flip with Malik Monk, who's out the rest of the season now. How good has that guy been stepping up for Cat? 23 more points tonight, 6 of 10 from 3. And, I mean, do you think the fact that now that he's a full-time starter, it should help or hurt his chances at winning that six-man award? I I think it will actually help him because he's on a bigger stage. He's getting more minutes, but he's just doing a lot of what he's done for the past two years. Like, his game hasn't really changed all that much since Cat got injured. But his effectiveness is still at that same really high level. He's filling in for an all NBA um, center in Cat. And the Wolves really haven't missed a beat. Obviously, they need Cat for the playoffs, and having Nas on the bench just makes their depth and, you know, their second units so much more dominant. But I think this further exposure, being in the starting lineup with the Wolves, really in this fascinating race for the one seed down the stretch Malik Monk is hurt for the basically rest of the regular season that's a lot of spotlight on Nas so I think it can only help especially if he kind of just keeps putting up awesome numbers which reflect his impact across the entire season 
Yeah, I, I'm with you, man. I, I, I really am. I think it only helps his case. I mean, I think if nothing else, what he's done really embodies the award, really, at the end yeah. of the day. I, I, you're a spark plug off the bench for 60 straight games, and then you have to come in. Think about the pressure. you got to come in and fill the shoes of Cat almost as a one-for-one, one, and you pass that test with flying colors, actually somehow become even more efficient with your shot in the process. So, I mean, yeah, Monk was running away with it, rightfully so. He's been a machine all year long. He put up 38 against the Wolves. Never forget that a couple months ago. But now I do think it's Nas Reed's to lose. And that's a pretty wild turn of events if you put any money down on that just a week or two ago. Um, you already touched on this at the top. I kind of want to circle back to it, though, because I think a lot of people, I think you're right, a lot of people thought this would have been a good chance to give Anthony Edwards some rest here, especially after what we've seen the past two, three games. Clearly, the fingers bothering him, at least to some degree. Uh, he was 0 for his last 22 threes coming into the night, as you already mentioned. A lot of jumpers coming up short. You can tell the guy's just exhausted at times. I mean, the guy goes like Game 7 World Series <laughs> Every chance he gets, every second he's on the court, it's game seven World Series for that guy. But tonight, he snaps the streak from three, goes five of 12 from deep. He was just letting him fly from deep tonight. 28, yeah. six assists, two steals. And they got up so much that he only had to play 30 minutes. That was kind of nice to see as well. But were you in that camp, though? Were you in that camp that said maybe they should have rested him for this one, especially when you see the final score being such a slaughter at the end of the night? And what are your thoughts about making sure this dude's fresh and, and ready to go 100% for the playoffs, you know? Because it's almost like this was your shot, right? Like, it, not sure you really want to sit the guy now with, with Phoenix coming up Friday night or a L.A. coming up on Sunday night. So, I don't know, missed opportunity there or, or no? Um, I, if you were going to sit him kind of down the stretch here, this was the game to do it back to back. He's been dog tired, injured hand has been playing like crap, honestly. And it, I, I thought this was going to be the one because I every excuse that you would need it, it's sitting right there for you. Um, but Finch doesn't really do that. The Timberwolves don't really do that. They don't really rest don't. guys. Um, no. and you know, going into this road trip, I do think that it was good to, throw him out there and let him kind of find some sort of rhythm with this jumper, hit, knock down a couple shots. Um, you know, he still put up a solid stat line, not the most efficient night, mm -hmm. but it doesn't really matter because 28 points, six assists, five of 12 from three. That's, that's more than good enough given how he's been playing, especially uh, last night in their last game, really bad up until that final minute when he just randomly turned it around. So I, I think this was a good, opportunity to kind of throw him out there let him regain some of that confidence with the shot um find that rhythm only play him 30 minutes he sat basically i think the entire fourth quarter and now he's got a couple days off and should be fresh hopefully a little more confidence back in you know back in his groove not that he ever lacks for confidence um but just kind of refinding that rhythm going into what's going to be a, a really important close to the season. Yeah, well said. Good breakdown there. Uh, some box score scouting here. I know it doesn't always tell the whole story, but something to go off of here. Okay, Rudy, 11 points, 15 boards. Jaden, 8 points, 3 blocks, 2 steals. Slow-mo, 3 points, 5 assists. Monte Morris, 13 points off the bench. Nah, 14 points. Everybody's plus minus. When you get a game like this, everybody's plus minus is just insane. But Luca Garza, garbage time, 16 points. Go off, young fella. Uh, final thoughts on all that. Just an opportunity. Shout out anyone else for good or bad before we move on. Yeah, and Luca Garza getting almost two points a minute. Um, just incredible efficiency right there. Just no, no one has a greener light than Luca Garza. I see all star in his future, right? <laughs> I'm playing 48 minutes at that rate. I mean, goodness. Um, but and it's good to see Leonard Miller get some extended run yeah. too. Uh, you Actually, know, the Wolves' yeah. second round draft pick. A lot of intrigue and hype around him. So he's a long term project, and I know fans want to see more of him. But it's good to just see him get you know at least five minutes, knock down a three. He had a fun little kind of transition uh, dump off pass to Luca, sh showing some stuff. So it was really good to see guys like uh, Josh Minot, Dacian Nix, Leonard Miller, mm -hmm. Wendell Moore really get some extended run and, and just, you know, actually get a, a, a few numbers here and there. Uh, all right. Plenty more deep dive on the Wolves and where they stack up in this Western Conference. That's all coming up right after this. 
quick reminder tonight's episode brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, patience. What brings home the winning trophy? It's what also keeps your ride or die alive. And eBay Motors, they got everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to the ultimate peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, eBay Motors, they got it all. And whether you're into speed, Power or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. Check this out. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay's guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. I just want to touch on the turnovers real quick. Coming into tonight, the past two games, they had 18 versus the Rockets, 14 versus the Bulls, 27 points off turnovers last night versus the Rockets, 21 on Sunday versus the Bulls. So I know tonight they cleaned things up. I think they only had eight or at least, you know, four or five minutes left in the game. They only had eight. So huge turnaround. But the first half of the season, and then some really, it's been kind of a part of their game. They have struggled with a little bit, right? A little up and down. Where do you stand on the turnovers? Obviously, it's a part of the game. Happens to every team any given night. They did look great tonight and versus Denver. I mean, they were almost flawless. Remember, 19 assists to zero turnovers at halftime in that game. But come playoff time, do these types of things worry you? Like like what special teams or, or hustle statistics, I guess, do you think the Wolves need to clean up or focus on the most once they do get into the big dance come playoff time? Yeah, and in the playoffs, they're going to have to win every single rebounding battle. Mm, okay. uh, when, you, when you're this big, you, you can't lose a rebounding battle. And uh, we've kind of seen in the games that they do lose those. So that's where it kind of gets away from them. They've been high turnover all year. Um, and they've, they, they've over, overcome that for the most part. Uh, the games where it gets really bad and really sloppy and really lazy, that's where, you know, it's those games like the Chicago game where things kind of get out of control and you lose to a lesser team. I don't have as much of an issue with the turnovers as the raw number. It's the types of turnovers where when guys are making you know, really difficult passes on the interior or trying to throw a lob to Rudy that got, kind of gets broken up or a skip pass to the corner that gets stolen. Those are kind of okay because you're taking chances. You're trying to really do something creative and high level on offense, and they're not immediately sparking transition. What we saw in these last couple games from Ant where he would drive into traffic and lose the ball or drive into traffic and then try and kick it back out to the top of the key. And then those lazy passes get picked off. And mm -hmm. those are just a guaranteed two points every single time. It's those ones where it's like you, you got to get rid of those because those are 10 to 15 points in a playoff game that you're just gifting the opponent that you just can't afford. It, it It's just there's not enough margin for error to be making those kind of mistakes, but the, the high level kind of creative playmaking stuff that are more kind of more represent like a, a missed shot kind of like when you throw a lob to Rudy, he drops it or it gets picked off or something. Mm -hmm. That's basically a missed shot. Those are fine, but it's, it's the laziness that immediately sparks transition and the other team having number, a numbers advantage going the other way. That's just, way too easy of points. That's a really good breakdown. Well noted there. Um, I asked Jack this. I would love your two cents. Everybody's just mentally starting to get into playoff mode, visioning what it's all going to look like. Things just go back to normal when Cat comes back or what? Like, like, what does it all look and feel like? Because it's one thing to pencil a guy in on paper. There is a human element to these things, though. So I guess, what what would you be worried about when it comes to just thrusting a new guy in? He's been off the, you know, off the court for four or five weeks at that point, right? Into the starting lineup right when the playoffs start. And I guess, too, on the other side of the coin, what area are you maybe most excited to just get Cat back on the court for the Wolves? Yeah, excited is just to have his shooting back. Yes, um, of course. Because, yeah, you know, you have, theoretically, hopefully, you have him and Nas launching 15 to 23-point attempts a game. That's fun. 
That's, that's when the offense takes a huge jump up. Um, what I worry about is if he comes back and is trying to do too much and trying to immediately get back to that all all star level um, and overcomplicating things and drawing offensive fouls and getting a hero ball going on exactly. Yeah. And if the shot's a little rusty and it's not falling, does he get frustrated and then try and compensate with right. some of those reckless drives? That's where I kind of get worried. But if he keeps it simple, just qu- make quick decisions you know, pick and pop, let it fly or make that extra pass to the corner. Keep it simple. Play like Nas has been. Um, then it's like, oh boy, now, now we're going to have some fun. Uh, ESPN, I don't know if you saw it, just dropped their uh, latest power rankings. Wolves were fourth. Boston one, Denver two, OKC three, Wolves four, Dallas all the way up to five, by the way. Six of the top eight teams all in the West. Go figure. Um, agree with those rankings? Do they match up with Tyler Metcalf's Candace Hoopas rankings or what? OKC's lost two in a row now, and the Wolves just beat Denver. Yeah, and I I, I do th- I do agree with Boston and Denver ahead, sure. Um, sure. you know. Boston has like a 16 game lead in the East. They've been dominant all year. Denver reigning champions. I get it. You got to beat them. Wolves haven't done anything. You got to do it. The OKC one. It's like, come on. Like, come on uh, what are we doing? Um, I, I who, know who Shea, paid you off. Exactly. Who paid you off? It's like, I, I know on. they're the fun, sexy, young, new thing, but mm. come on. Like, come on. The entire thing with them is that they're too young and too small to actually make a dent, dent in the playoffs. I think they're a little better than that. I think they're legit. I think they're really good. And I know Shea has sat the last two games and uh, Jalen Williams sat tonight. But come on. I, 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 that's the one I, I don't really get. Agreed. Agreed. I don't think many people are going to argue. And I don't think we're being biased just because, oh, this is a T Wolf show and no. we're talking to Wolves fans. I don't think we're being biased. And I'm really not saying OKC either. should be like 12th. I, no, I would of just flop them. No, flip flop them. No. Um, any final thoughts on this A Rod versus Glenn Taylor fiasco we're in the middle of? If not, I totally get it. But wanted <laughs> to give you, you know, another opportunity, maybe vent or get anything off your chest, maybe a closing statement, if you will, because depending on who you ask, this is actually the A topic around town. I really think the more and more info that comes out on this, we're going to look back and there's going to be like a 30 for 30 documentary made about this. This is better than reality TV, man. This is insane. Just some of it, it's so much of it feels incredibly childish um, for billionaires to be kind of haggling yeah. over. Um, I, I, it's, it's, gross it's dumb it's brutal i hate that it's happening right now in the midst of the wolves best season ever um i i would just like these guys to stop doing interviews and and figure this stuff out in the courtroom agreed well said short and sweet all right plenty more coming up we're going to preview that lakers and phoenix suns game coming up this weekend that's all coming up right after this Quick reminder, tonight's episode brought to us by Amazon Fire TV. That's the number one streaming platform around Fire TV. That's your one-stop shop destination for everything sports, live games to highlights to in-depth analysis with Amazon Fire TV. They offer amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV. That gives you access to millions of movies and TV episodes, not to mention free and live cable TV as well. Whether it's the entire MLB season, Season, PGA Masters right around the corner, NFL Draft at the end of the month, or March Madness Tournament. Trust me when I say you're going to want to have a Fire TV at your fingertips on every device possible. Plus, Fire TV now includes all of our daily content from every lockdown channel and a vast majority of the pro leagues and college conferences as well. You got to check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and your Alexa devices. Fire TV channels, it's the latest and greatest way to tap into all your watching needs. So don't miss out. To learn more, visit amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. That's amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. All right, quick little preview for this road trip now, because on paper, anytime you got to go all the way to the West Coast for two straight, it it ain't always easy, man. I don't care who you're playing. Not to mention, you are playing a dangerous Suns team right now, Lakers team who they're in fight or flight mode right now. They're scratching and clawing for their playoff seeding as well. Um, So what jumps out to you the most when you think about these two matchups, whether, you know, it's an opposing player who's kind of heating up a matchup you think is worth noting, whatever it may be. It, for me, it's it's that Phoenix matchup because I really need to get that uh, that blowout from earlier in the year kind of out of the front of my memory. Um, and the Suns are a mid range. They have a couple mid range assassins and Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, Kevin Durant, a couple of the best scorers 
ever and in the league right now. The thing with them is that they're so inconsistent that you never really know what type of night you're going to get from them. Are you going to get it where three Hall of Fame level scores show up or are they just going to kind of go through the motions and not really play any defense and be super disjointed on offense? So it's really tricky because when this Timberwolves team has really gotten torched on defense, it's when opponents have lit them up from the mid range. They've found their rhythm. They've gotten in a group there and then it expands to the three point range. Once the Timberwolves kind of have to adjust their coverages. We saw that in their first matchup when they, the wolves got blown out. I know it was a back to back and a road trip and all that kind of stuff, but no excuses right now. Uh, the Suns are desperately trying to get into that six seed, get out of the play in tournament as are the Lakers. Suns are also trying to fend off the Lakers uh, and not drop lower than that eight, eight seed. Uh, so they only have to ideally put for them, play one playing game. There's it's really tight down there. So these teams are going to give it their all. They're going to bring their a game. Mm -hmm. um, and they got so much experience going deep into the playoffs so that these high pressure games are just kind of second nature to them. So I, I'm really excited to see how the Wolves match up there and kind of hold their own and hopefully adjust and give us a better performance than their last matchup. Yeah, well said. Uh, Chris says the Wolves bench is too good for Phoenix to handle. Where do the Wolves bench rank? Like in the NBA power rankings of bench and depth play, how good are they right now? I, I really think they're up there at the very top top, um, top five for sure i mean pretty safely if, top if not five if right not now. higher yeah wow. i'd say wow. floor of five um and just you you have guys like nasri Nikhil alexander walker monte morris um just stepping up and when you look at how good they've been and you put them on any other team almost any other team in the league this year they're mm -hmm. probably starting so wow. i i just think they have a lot of depth they have a lot of versatility and guys who do it on both ends of the floor so i i completely agree with that comment their, their, their bench has been huge this season and a big 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 reason they have the record they do uh we're in this final stretch now six games left it's totally crunch time when you look at the nuggets thunders and wolves remaining schedules we just talked about this west coast trip now the next two phoenix and la but when you look at all three of these teams schedules now uh, what gives like who's got the best chance to take the, take this thing home when it's all said and done and what i, I guess what do the wolves need to do to get that number one seed i know next wednesday is going to be huge in denver yeah and I went out would help um, that, yeah. that that would probably do it yeah. um, that they, they, they have to beat Denver in April. They have to, or April 10th. Yeah. Um, you know, they can't drop a silly one against Atlanta or Washington. Mm -hmm. And you know, then it's just, it's Phoenix and LA. There, there, there's not a whole lot left. Um, and four of those are against playoff teams. Just take care of business. Um, I and know that, that, OKC has the 12th most difficult schedule. Okay. I know Denver, really outside of Minnesota, it's only the Clippers. And yeah, the rest got, of their schedule is pretty cake. They so, got Clippers tomorrow. And then, yeah, Atlanta, They have Utah, to lose that game. They got to lose versus the Clippers. They got to yeah. lose versus the Clippers. To have uh, otherwise, chance. they're winning out dependent on that Minnesota game. So, yeah, no, absolutely. Go. What else is going on in the West right now? Like broader scope, you see Dallas number five in the power rankings. Who's hot right now? Who's looking dangerous that maybe you wouldn't want to meet come playoff time? Or, or, or I guess what's just sticking out to you right now as a whole in the Western Conference? Yeah, and that, that race from really four through nine is getting a lot more mucked up than I thought thick. it was going to. Yeah, it's I getting mean, muddy. The Clippers are five and five over their last 10. They're only two games up now on Dallas and the five seed. Dallas has just lost um, their last game and they're only, or they're now tied with New Orleans, who is only six and four in their last 10. They lost their last two. And then they're only a game up on the Kings and the Suns, who are only two games up on the Lakers. And it's like a lot of these guys are playing each other here in these last couple games. So mm -hmm. I, there could be a ton of movement in that just five through eight spot where there are four really good teams um, in that range, only separated by a game. So it, it, it could get really, really messy um, in these final games. And if some teams start to maybe kind of finagle and uh, play a little seeding roulette here and, and try and manipulate their spot in the standings for a particular matchup. Um, I, I just think it's going to be really interesting because it wouldn't shock me if Dallas, New Orleans or Phoenix, ended up winning a first round series. Well, well, who scares you more, New Orleans or Dallas? I mean, no matter the sport, you don't want to play the team that's coming in hot, 
hair on fire, nothing to lose, playing with house money. Uh, New Orleans or Dallas, though, which matchup would scare you more, I guess, you know, second round of the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, based on how they've kind of matched up with the Wolves this season, I really, really don't want that New Orleans matchup um, because that was kind of one of the rare blowout losses that the Timberwolves had where there weren't a whole lot of excuses around it. They just got worked. Um, but I, I, I want nothing to do with Luca in the playoffs, especially when he's really figuring it out with Kyrie. Um, Gafford has been huge for them. Yeah. PJ Washington's just kind of a solid toolsy wing, but hit that, that combination of Luca and Kyrie, they're two basketball geniuses who can just figure any f- figure out any coverage that you throw at them and get extraordinarily hot. Their chemistry is through the roof right now. So that New Orleans matchup scares me in terms of roster from top to bottom, but in terms of just best player on the floor, Luka Doncic just terrifies me. How crazy would that series be, man? I I mean, no matter what, it's the NBA playoffs, man. It's going to be fun. It's going to be electric. It's going to be dramatic. But yeah, man, I I would not want to show up that (laughs) night with Luka on the other side of the court, man. Not in the playoffs, man. And Kyrie Oh, in the playoffs? Stop it. Um, Well done tonight, my man. That was always fun. Always fun. Talking ball, talking Wolves with you. Wolves dominate tonight. They beat up on Toronto, 133-85. OKC loses tonight. So that number one seed still up for grabs. Six games left. Tomorrow off, then off to the West Coast. Suns and Lakers. Suns up first. That's on Friday. Tip off for that one, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. As always... Huge shout out to all you guys that joined us on the stream. You guys are the absolute best. Rest assured, we'll be back each and every same time, same place right here to break it all down. Quick reminder, got to go check out all of Tyler's work up on X at Team Metcalf 11. Anything new over there? Canis Hoopus, anything on Twitter, any new articles, film breakdowns, anything we should go check out? I uh, just ha- have a ton of draft stuff going up at uh, NoSealingsNBA.com. Nice. We'll have something on Alabama's point guard, uh, Mark Sears, um, mm-hmm. who's in the Final Four uh, this weekend, um, up on Friday. But Canis Hoopa's team just continues to pump out elite Timberwolves content. So just yeah. ch- ch- check out everyone over there and then obviously all the Lockdown Wolves stuff. Y- yeah, they're ripping it up, man. And make sure you check out our entire crew on the Minnesota Basketball Party each and every Wednesday. Brand new episode just dropped today. Sam Ekstrom hosting our guy Jack Borman, Gophers legend Ron Johnson, Kara Levin's Reggie Wilson, and don't forget Ben Beacon. When all else fails, Ben Beacon always ripping it up over on the Lockdown Wolves podcast. That's each and every day as well. That'll do it for us tonight. He's Tyler Metcalf. I'm Luke Inman on Twitter at Luke underscore Spinman. Until next time, signing out.